think the three most common tripwires that we face with teams is, first of all, we tend to call a lot of things teams that really aren't teams. So 16 people who convene to exchange information about what's going on in their individual parts of the business but never never do any real work together or accomplish anything. And that can be a pretty significant demotivator and make people not actually want to come to the meetings or uh, or really be part of the, the team at all. Um, I think the second common thing is we use teams for things that don't really make sense to be um, to be a team at all. And one of the ones that I see pretty frequently in, in organizations is the uh, convening a group and saying, so what do you guys want to talk about, right? We, have to, we all have to get together. We're this um, same part of the organization. Uh, and that, that really is not a way to get the best out of a group of people. What you're going to get in answer to that question is whatever the most tactical, urgent things are on people's minds, you're not going to get this compelling piece of teamwork that really needs to be uh, done together. And the other thing that I think is probably uh, a really common tripwire around teams and organizations is um, assuming that the structure or that of the organization or what positions people hold really drives the composition of the team. So all my direct reports or all of the heads of the different departments of the hospital by default become a team, rather than asking the question, what's the unique added value of having a team? What's its compelling purpose? And who are the people that can contribute to that, that I need to invite to the table to accomplish that piece of work together? The essential conditions for team effectiveness are three aspects of team design that we call the essentials because if you can't get them basically in good shape, you're better off trying to get the work done in some other way um, without a team. And they directly address the tripwires that I was just describing. First of all, if you want to have an effective team, you have to have a real team. By that, I mean a bounded group of people that are stable. They're kept together for some period of time, and they actually are interdependent. They have to in- exchange information or resources in order to accomplish some goal together. So that's essential number one, real team. The second one is a compelling purpose, uh, a purpose that is clear. We would know exactly what it would look like to accomplish it. It's challenging. It's going to require some of our best capabilities to accomplish it. And probably above all, it's got to be consequential, um, meaning the purpose of the team has real impact on the lives and work of others. So that's the second of the essentials. And the third one is the right people. And by that, I mean, given that compelling purpose, who has the perspectives, experience, capabilities to contribute to accomplishing that purpose? Um, Who also has the demonstrated um, teamwork skills to be able to work together uh, effectively um, and and that sort of small, intact group of people that can contribute to the purpose? We identify three enabling conditions of team effectiveness, and we call them the enablers because once you have the essentials in good shape, these are conditions that will really accelerate the development of a well-designed team into a truly superb performing unit. And so the first of those is a sound structure. Even a well-designed team needs a few elements of structure for it to be effective in doing its work together. And the most critical ones that we've found in our research is keeping the team small. So it's a small enough group that they can actually uh, accomplish work together in single digits, right? Keep it as small as possible. Um, the second element of a, of a sound structure is m- a meaningful team task. Too often we convene teams and what they're doing together and what's on the agenda is not real teamwork and it doesn't actually reflect the compelling purpose of the, of the team. And the third one is some norms of conduct. Teams are really helped by having some explicit ground rules about what we always must do and what we must not do in the way that we work together. So that's the first of the enabler, sound, sound structure. 
The second of the enablers is about the, the larger organizational context. So is the organizational context, the structures and systems, are they designed in such a way that they actually enable and promote teamwork rather than get in its way? So for example, um, the reward system in an organization, does it actually provide important positive consequences for great team performance? Or does it really only reward individual performance or even worse, put people in competition with each other for rewards? Uh, another aspect of the organizational context that matters a lot for teams is the information system. Is it designed to, to synthesize and provide data to the teams to know how well they're doing so they can actually monitor and manage their own work? And too often, we expect people to do great teamwork, but we haven't created the, the organizational context that really makes room and supports them in, in being able to do that. And then finally, the third of the enablers um, is, is available expert team coaching. So someone who can intervene in the real time process of the, the team members and help them to really make the best use of their collective resources in, in accomplishing the work. And the reason that we keep team coaching last in chronological order is that what we've seen in the research is a team that isn't basically well designed, that doesn't have the essentials or a, a, a supportive organizational context and some structure really can't take advantage of good coaching. It's only when those basic conditions are already well designed that a team can really take advantage of a, a few smart interventions in the way they're working together and get better and better over time.